Okay, folks, welcome back. So you should have a fundamental AI that chases you around. Currently looking at the preview of our nav mesh, I'm gonna hit P to turn that off. And now we're gonna jump in to creating the animations. So I'm gonna bring in my, my other window, gonna make it a little bit smaller. Uh, and what I like to do here is create a new folder where we're going to save our animations. In class, I actually went as far as to create another folder within that for our AI. Uh, right now, we don't really have any animations in here. And if we're going to be adding animations for the enemy, we might also want to start adding some animations for our player as well. So this might get pretty populated. OK. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go into this folder and I am going to right click to create something new within this folder. And I am going to create an animation of type blend space 1D. I'm going to pick the top skeleton mannequin, mannequin and then it's going to prompt me to give this a name. Uh, let's see. Um, I am basically going to be making a idle let's see idle walk run enemy ai okay my naming here is a little bit different than i would that i did in class but i think this is a little bit more useful than what i showed you earlier so i'm changing the name convention a little bit okay i double click it it opens up in the same window where i had my blueprint for my enemy ai and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to my axis settings and I'm going to open up this horizontal axis and I'm going to change the name of this axis to speed. This is going to correlate to the, the speed that the enemy is moving at. Right now, the enemy AI, if I want to check, I can go over to the enemy AI and there is a component called character movement. If I select that and scroll down, it can move at a maximum speed of 600 centimeters a second. That's actually faster than my character can move, but let's leave it at 600 for now. Um, the acceleration is also faster than my character acceleration, so we'll try and address that later. Right now, the enemy can move faster than we can, which is problematic. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my idle walk, and the maximum speed is going to be 600, matching the maximum speed from our enemy AI. Now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you that there are a whole bunch of animations in your asset browser over here. They're really fantastic. Uh, we can make some things happen really quickly. It's super amazing. MM is for male mannequin. So these are the animations for the male mannequin. And then there are other ones which are MF. I scroll right past them. MF, which are for the mannequin female. And if I just type MF in the search, it's going to show me that I've got an idol. And I'm going to put that idol in the far left drag it all the way to the left. I'm going to put the walk in next, and I like to put the walk a little bit below half. And then I'm going to put the run all the way here to the right at 600. Now, this says hold control to set the preview point. If you're on a Mac, it's not control, it's command. So if you hit that button and scrub this back and forth, you can see this nice transition from idle to walking to walking faster speed walking and then you're going to hit running these are really nice blends okay so once we have that done i'm just going to save this and now we are going to go into Are creating our next animation and to do that I'm again going to right-click animation 
and this time we are going to create an animation blueprint. I'm going to pick that top one again, SK Mannequin, or Mannequin, since we're working on Quinn, and it's going to give me a name. So in this case, it is a animation blueprint. So I can type ABP. Um, however, there's a lot of ABPs in here. So I'm actually just going to say AP so that I know it's one that I made. Uh, AP, and we're going to call this the enemy AI. So I might get this a little confused with my BP enemy AI. But because it's got the AP, I know it's going to be my animation. Okay. Once you have that, we're going to double click it. And that is going to open up the animation graph where it's showing an output pose. I've changed the scale of this a little bit from where it's normally set. So I'm going to try and change it back. And now we're going to grab our idle walk run and we're going to pull it into this window. And once we have that, we're going to connect the little stick figure-ish things. And if I compile this, now this preview is going to be of someone at idle. This whole thing is being triggered by speed. So we need to pull speed off and turn it into a variable so that we can actually control that variable and set what animation is currently being played. Once I've done added the blend space and I've added the speed variable, I'm done in the animation graph and I'm going to go over to the event graph. Okay. Now here I need to do a few things to set things up. All right. So I'm going to drag off this return value for the try get pawn owner and I am going to say cast to BP enemy AI. Now, what on earth does this mean? Basically it's saying okay I want you to act like you are the BP enemy AI and I want you to, to do some things. So I'm going to pull this as that other file. I want you to get character movement and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom for this one and it's going to be right here. So this is saying I know I'm not the BP enemy AI but I want you to think that I am and I want you to get how the character is currently moving. That character movement is going to be set as a vector. So it's going to be an X and a Y and a Z. And I don't actually want all of those things. I just, or actually wait, because it's blue, it's not a vector yet. I think when I do the next step, get velocity. So I'm asking, get the movement and then get velocity is also going to be a scroll down at the very bottom. And now it's a vector, it's a, it's a yellow. And so it's an X, Y, and a Z. And so that X, Y, and the Z is going to have directionality. The, it's gonna have an X of a certain value, a Y of a certain value, and a Z of a certain value. So if I'm going in a diagonal, it's gonna have that information. And all I wanna know is how quickly am I moving? So I'm gonna pull this one off and I'm gonna say, get vector length. Actually, sorry, it's not get, it's just vector length. There we go. And so that's going to basically say, I don't care about all of the directionality, I just want the length. And once we have that, we're going to drag our speed variable in here and we're going to say set speed. And I want you to take the length of the movement and make that my variable speed, which over in my animation graph is setting which part of this blend animation I'm going to play. So basically it's saying, how fast are you going? Okay, let's play the matching animation for that. 
Once you have that, you're gonna plug the red event blueprint update animation into the blue cast to BP enemy AI, and then you're gonna plug the blue cast into the set. And that should be it for, for this blueprint. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile that and save that. And now that we've done that, I need to jump back to my BP enemy AI. Uh, if you don't still have that open, you can go to content and I had it save right here and you can just double click that. You're gonna wanna go to the mesh and the mesh is the thing that's being animated and over here on the right for that mesh is animation and we change the animation class to B. And again, you can see there's a bunch of A, B, P's for our animation blueprint. And I just want the one that's called AP. Makes it easier for me to find the stuff that I make. There we go. We say compile, we say save just to be sure. I close this window and I cross my fingers that I haven't made any mistakes. And I try walking in front of the enemy who's now chasing after me and who keeps catching up with me. So we talked about, if I click on this, we talked about the speed, character movement. All of that is stored right here. So I set things up to work with it being 600, but how fast are we? Let's figure that out. So to figure out how our controller works, we need to go to the third person folder, open blueprints and double click the BP third person character. And here is the third person character. If I go to scroll down character movement over here on the right, my top speed is 600. Sorry, my top speed, six, it says 500. Why did I say 600? Our top speed is 500. We are slower than the AI. Let's crank that up a little bit. I wanna be faster than the AI. Additionally, our acceleration is 1500. Oh, compile and save that. Let's go over to the enemy. The enemy is faster off the line. Let's turn down their acceleration. So they're a little bit slower than us. Let's compile it and save it. And now we are gonna be faster and have better acceleration. There we go. I am able to run away from it. Takes a little while for it to catch. Now the other thing that was mentioned in class is any time, and let me actually get this window out of the way. It's obscuring enough of my view that it's creating a problem for me. Okay, so the other thing we mentioned in class is when we play, Anytime there's something that obscures my view of the character, like this wall, it is gonna push my camera forward and into my character. Um, now I don't really like the fact that it's zooming in at my waist and when I'm being chased by something, it's, it's pushing me to essentially zoom in on the, the butt of my character um, or you know, if I'm facing the other way, it's, it's zooming into the front. So there, I don't think that, I don't feel that's very appropriate and I think I should change that. So under the BP third person character, which is everything that's controlling my character, there is a camera boom. And that boom is set to be just about eight and a half units up. And so that really places it right at my uh, right at my pelvis. If I look in the viewport, right, that's where it's being placed. So I could grab this and pull it up and point it right at my head. So that's 78.5 roughly. In class, I made this 80 just on a guess and it seemed pretty good, but 78.49 might be spot on perfect. So now when I press play, my view is a little bit higher. I'm looking at my head. And when I walk over to a wall 
and I rotate around, it's going to zoom in on my head, on my face or the back of my head. When I'm standing with a bot behind me, I'm going to be looking at the back of my head instead of looking at my lower posterior, which definitely seems a lot more appropriate. Okay, so we have changed our speed. We have changed the bot's acceleration. I've changed where the camera is focusing. We've made a lot of little tweaks to make this a, a better interface. So that's everything that I covered in class this week. And I'll record another video in the near future which will look at setting up some other animations and having a little bit more opportunity for feeling like you're controlling the character. All right, thank you for joining.